Hey yo, this is Dan, and you're watching the Motherland Channel. Today, we're diving into what's still gonna be kicking after an EMP event. Whether it's some bad guy stuff or Mother Nature having a fit, we've got the lowdown. Let's jump right in, shall we? And hey, this isn't a top 10 countdown or anything, so we're going in no specific order. Hand Operated Tools There's undeniable value in the simplicity and reliability of hand operated tools. Take manual can openers, for instance, which require no batteries or power source, just good old, fashioned human effort. Or consider hand saws, which, with a bit of elbow grease, can cut through materials without the need for electricity. Then there's the trusty hand drill, making holes using nothing more than manual rotation. Non-electric water filters. In an EMP attack, access to clean, safe drinking water becomes a pressing concern. That's where gravity, fed water filters, like the renowned Berkey system, prove their worth. These ingenious devices don't rely on electricity or complex electronic components. Instead, they harness the simple power of gravity to pull water through purifying elements. As water moves from the upper chamber to the lower chamber, contaminants are trapped and removed, ensuring that the water you drink is free from harmful substances. Wind, up radios and flashlights, an EMP attack will render all battery, operated gadgets useless. Suddenly, those trusty wind, up devices, radios and flashlights, become the unsung heroes of the day. Rather than being dependent on finicky batteries or vulnerable electronic circuits, these devices are powered by a simple, human, driven mechanism. Just a few turns of a hand crank can generate enough energy to illuminate a dark room or tune into radio broadcasts. These broadcasts could be potential lifelines, offering crucial updates or information during emergencies. Batteries. Believe it or not, your everyday batteries? They're pretty much chillin' when an EMP hits. And those old, school, straightforward battery, powered gadgets? They should be good to go too. But let's keep it real. Finding truly simple stuff these days is like finding a needle in a haystack with all the fancy microelectronics they slap onto everything. But yeah, basic batteries and their old school pals, they're likely gonna be just fine. Optical devices. Imagine a world where the digital glare of screens and electronics dims unexpectedly due to an unforeseen event like an EMP. Amid this digital blackout, simple optical devices like binoculars, magnifying glasses, and traditional film based cameras stand resilient. Binoculars would still let you scope out distant objects or landscapes turning you into the eyes for your group. The trusty magnifying glass not only assists in examining finer details of objects, but can also double as an emergency fire starter under the right sunlit conditions. Traditional cameras. Let's not forget the charm of old school cameras. They capture memories on film without needing any electronic aid. In a suddenly unplugged world, these optical devices remind us of the enduring power of analog tools. They might lack digital enhancements, but their reliability and straightforward functionality can be invaluable when more complex systems falter. Books and printed material. There's still something undeniably special about the tangible nature of books and printed materials. And guess what? When an EMP sweeps through, that Kindle might just go kaput, but your trusty old paperbacks and hardcovers, they're gonna keep on keeping on. That dusty atlas on your bookshelf, the dog, eared manual in your garage, or even that novel you've been meaning to read, they're unaffected by the EMP's electrical chaos. Old cars. If your car was made before the year 1990, and preferably even earlier than that, the amount of electronics in vehicles has grown exponentially, particularly since the year 2000. So, modern vehicles' reliance on micro, processors makes them easy victims to an EMP. That, unfortunately, will reduce most vehicles to roadblocks. If your vehicle was made between 1990 and 2000, you still have a chance that it could run, but there is still a risk depending upon how many electronics were installed. Your safest bet is if you have access to a vehicle that was made before 1990. Oh, road vehicles. That is, dirt bikes, ATVs, and motorcycles with simple systems that don't rely on modern electronics to operate them. This could be ideal for you depending upon where you are since there will be many useless cars cluttering up the roads, particularly in and around major cities. And an added tip here. 
If you are planning on getting a motorcycle or an off-road vehicle for survival purposes, choose one that can be converted to diesel. Bicycles. When the world grinds to a halt following an electronic shutdown, it's the humble bicycle that emerges as a silent hero. Remember the simple joy of pedaling down a lane with the wind brushing past your face? Now, multiply that with the practicality in a post. EMP scenario. Bicycles, being devoid of electronic components, stand unaffected and ready to roll. They offer a sustainable means of transportation that relies solely on human energy, making them invaluable when fuel becomes scarce and vehicles are rendered useless. Also, they can navigate through traffic jams of stalled cars, take shortcuts through paths unfit for vehicles, and are silent, allowing for discreet movement. Plus, they're excellent for both physical health and mental well being, providing an aerobic workout that can be essential in stressful times. Vintage Electronics Yes, those bad boys running on vacuum tubes instead of that newfangled solid, state stuff. Back in the atomic age, when they were first playing around with EMPs, these were the champs. And get this, those vintage beauties laughed in the face of those electromagnetic pulses during tests. They just kept on trucking without a hitch. Acoustic Instruments In a world suddenly silenced by the absence of electronic hums and buzzes, the melodious strums of guitars, soulful strokes of violins, and rhythmic beats of drums become more significant than ever. These acoustic instruments, untouched by the EMP's wrath, carry on their age, old duty of narrating human stories, emotions, and aspirations. They not only become essential outlets for expressing one's feelings, but also serve as crucial tools for bringing communities together. Imagine the comforting atmosphere of a campfire surrounded by survivors, the melancholy of a situation lightened by a harmonious tune or a spirited song. In moments of crisis, the primal and universal language of music can be therapeutic, healing souls and reminding people of the pre-EMP days. Mechanical clocks and watches. In today's digital age, the elegance and resilience of mechanical clocks and watches often get overlooked, relying on traditional gears, springs, and meticulous craftsmanship rather than electronic circuits. These timepieces operate without a battery or electronic components. Clothesline. In a post, EMP world, the hum of electric dryers and whirl of washing machines would become distant memories, replaced by the tactile and rhythmic experiences of manual laundering. Clotheslines, once a staple in many backyards, would make a strong comeback, their lines filled with freshly washed garments fluttering in the wind. This sun and wind drying method is not only eco, friendly, but also acts as a natural disinfectant, leaving clothes with that irreplaceable fresh outdoor scent. Manual washing equipment. Alongside the clothes line, other manual washing tools like washboards, hand, cranked washing drums and plunger like agitators, would become household essentials. These devices, though physically demanding, are effective in cleaning clothes without the need for electricity. The act of manually washing also brings about a certain mindfulness and appreciation for the resources at hand. Shared communal washing spaces could even foster community bonding, turning a mundane chore into an opportunity for social interaction and mutual support. Mechanical typewriters. The clack, clack of a mechanical typewriter can evoke a sense of nostalgia. But in a world where an EMP has rendered electronic devices useless, these relics of the past would suddenly become modern necessities. Harking back to a time before the digital revolution, mechanical typewriters require no electricity or electronic components to function. With each press of a key, an arm swings forward, imprinting inked letters onto paper, powered solely by the typist's fingertips. Not only would typewriters serve practical purposes like recording vital information, sending written communications, or documenting daily events, but they would also preserve the art of writing in its most tactile form. The tangible connection between the writer, the keys, and the paper offers a unique and deliberate writing experience that many believe fosters creativity and mindfulness. Hand pumps. Unlike their electric counterparts, which would become mere relics in the aftermath of an EMP, hand pumps rely on good old, fashioned human effort to work. Designed to extract water from wells or other underground sources, they operate on simple mechanical principles, using suction or pressure to draw water upwards. And it's not just about quenching thirst. 
Water is a necessity for hygiene, cooking, and even some medical needs. Modern urbanites may not realize it, but a significant portion of the global population still relies on hand pumps daily. These pumps range from the sophisticated, delivering water from considerable depths, to the rudimentary, serving shallower wells. They've been engineered over the years to be both efficient and durable, often requiring minimal maintenance. Wind and Water Mills Windmills, towering against the horizon, capture the kinetic energy of wind, transforming it into mechanical energy. This power has historically been employed to grind grain into flour, press seeds for oil, or even pump water. Their intricate design, perfected over centuries, ensures efficient energy conversion even in varying wind conditions. Water mills, on the other hand, tap into the inexhaustible flow of rivers and streams. The moving water turns large wheels, which through a system of gears and shafts, operate machinery. From ancient civilizations to pre-industrial Europe, these mills played crucial roles in food production, particularly in grinding grain. Some innovative designs have even allowed water mills to function as rudimentary power plants, converting flowing water's energy into electricity. Candles and oil lamps. Candles, made from materials like beeswax, soy, or paraffin, offer simplicity in design, but effectiveness in function. Their gentle glow not only pushes back the encroaching darkness, but also provides a sense of calm and coziness. The ritualistic act of lighting a candle, striking a match, feeling the warmth of the tiny flame, and watching it dance, can even be therapeutic, offering a moment of pause and reflection. Oil lamps, on the other hand, are a bit more intricate, but can produce a brighter and longer, lasting light. Typically fueled by kerosene, lamp oil, or even certain vegetable oils, they consist of a reservoir, a wick, and often a protective glass chimney. When the wick is lit, it draws oil from the reservoir, ensuring a consistent flame. Beyond their practical use, oil lamps also hold a certain nostalgic charm, reminiscent of scenes from classic novels or tales of seafaring adventures. Solar panels. Solar panels are tougher than you might think. Even after an EMP does its thing, these bad boys will still soak up those sun rays. But heads up, they might be a little sluggish and not pump out as much juice as before. Now, here's the kicker. The gizmo that charges your batteries from the panels? The solar charge controller? Yeah, that's probably toast. It's all fancy electronics and stuff. So, pro tip, stash away some backup parts in a safe spot. And if you've heard of a Faraday cage, that's like the VIP lounge for your solar gear after an EMP. Just saying. And that's it for our list of things that would still work after an EMP attack. If something's buzzing in your head that I missed, definitely drop it down in the comments below. If you found any of this good stuff, hit that thumbs up button. For any newcomers, a big ol' welcome to you. Please consider hitting that subscribe button. While you're hanging around, check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching, and God bless.